Book 39, B, Entry into the Realm of Reality, continued, B. Why didn't the disciples see any of this? Because of lack of corresponding roots of goodness. For they had not accumulated the roots of goodness conducive to vision of the transfiguration of all Buddhas, and they had not had the purifications of the arrays of qualities of all Buddha lands in the ten directions described to them, and they had not had the various wonders of all Buddhas described to them by the Buddhas, and they had not established beings in supreme perfect enlightenment while they were involved in the world, and they had not instilled in others. Minds the determination for enlightenment, and they were not capable of perpetuating the lineage of Buddhas, and they were not engaged in the salvation of all beings, and they had not exhorted enlightening beings to practice transcendent ways, and while they were involved in the world they had not focused their minds on the stage of knowledge superior to all worldlings, and they had not developed the foundations of goodness conducive to omniscience, and they had not perfected the transmundane roots of goodness of Buddhas, and they had not realized the miraculous superknowledge to purify all Buddha lands, and they did not know the source of the great Tao of enlightening beings, which is the good root of concentration on unique world transcending enlightenment that represents the range of vision of enlightening beings, and they were not born of the magical essence emanating from the power of the enlightened, and because hearers and individual illuminates do not share in the knowledge of enlightening beings control over holding various perceptions as in dreams, the growth of the current of joy of enlightening beings, and the manifestations of the range of the eye of knowledge of the universally good enlightening being. Because of that, those great disciples, who were the best of the best, did not see the miracle of the Buddha, did not hear it, know it, realize it, penetrate it, did not fix their minds on it, did not notice it, did not focus their attention on it, did not observe it, did not examine it, did not reflect on it, did not contemplate it. Why? Because that is the sphere of Buddhas, not the sphere of disciples. Therefore even though the disciples were in the very same Jita grove, they did not see those miracles of the Buddha. For indeed they did not have the corresponding roots of goodness, they did not have that purity of the eye of knowledge, whereby they could have seen the miracles of Buddha. They did not know the concentration whose minute point of focus would have given them access to those vast magical manifestations. They did not know that liberation or that spiritual capacity or that might or that power or that mastery or that state or that perception or that power of vision whereby they might recognize or see or penetrate or approach or discover or head for or observe or experience or reveal to others or explain or show or describe or make visible or arrive at or produce or lead beings into the cultivation and realization of the realities of the miracles of Buddha. That knowledge did not belong to them. Why? Because they were emancipated by the vehicle of hearers, they had realized the path of hearers, they had fulfilled the sphere of practices of hearers, they were fixed in the fruit of hearers, they rested on the knowledge of the light of truth. They were fixed at the limit of reality, they had gone to the state of eternal peace, they had no thought of great compassion and had no pity for the beings of the world, they had accomplished what they had to do for themselves. They had gathered in the Jita grove and were sitting there, in front of, behind, and to the left and right of the Buddha, in his presence, yet they did not see the miracles of the Buddha in the Jita grove. Why? It is not possible for those who have not developed omniscient knowledge, have not accomplished omniscient knowledge, have not set out for omniscient knowledge, have not resolved on omniscient knowledge, have not undertaken omniscient knowledge, have not penetrated. Omniscient knowledge, have not purified omniscient knowledge, to understand or become aware of or see or discover the miraculous manifestation of the concentration of the Buddha. Why? Because that is discernible only to the range of the vision of developed enlightening beings, not to the range of the vision of hearers. That is why the great disciples, the great hearers, though in the Jita grove, did not see the transfiguration of the Buddha, the magical appearances of the Buddha, the purifications of the Buddha land, the gathering of the enlightening beings. The situation was like that of hundreds of thousands of ghosts gathered on the bank of the great river Ganges, hungry and thirsty, naked, without shelter, emaciated, dehydrated by the wind and heat, attacked by flocks of crows, terrorized by wolves and jackals, 
they do not see the Ganges River, or they may see it as dry, without water, or full of ashes, because they are shrouded by actions that blind them. In the same way the old great disciples there in the Jita Grove did not see or penetrate the transfigurations of the Buddha, because they rejected omniscience and their eyes were veiled by ignorance. It was like the case of a man who has dozed off in the daytime in the midst of a large group of people and while asleep sees a celestial city with beautiful mansions appearing there in his dream. And sees the whole summit of the polar mountain, with groves and gardens, with innumerable nymphs all around, innumerable godlings living there, and various celestial flowers scattered about, and sees wish-fulfilling trees providing various celestial garments, jewel ornaments, and flower garlands, and sees musical trees producing all kinds of sweet celestial sounds, and many kinds of forms of pleasure and diversion, and hears the sweet sounds of the music and singing of the heavenly nymphs, and perceives himself as being there, seeing the adornment of the celestial arrays all over the place. The group of people who are there in the same place do not see this, are not aware of it, do not observe it, because it is the vision of the man in his dream, not the vision of the group of people in the same place. In the same way the enlightening beings and the world rulers on the verge of enlightenment, by virtue of the tremendous power of the Buddha, by the attainment of their own roots of goodness, by their own undertaking of the vow for omniscience, by development of the qualities of all Buddhas, by stabilization in the magnificent path of enlightening beings, by accomplishment of the outgrowths of the teachings of all aspects of omniscient knowledge, by fulfillment and purification of the higher aspirations of the acts of the universally good enlightening being, by entering the spheres of knowledge of all the stages of enlightening beings, by mastery of all the states of concentration of enlightening beings, and by unhindered contemplation of all the spheres of knowledge of enlightening beings, saw the inconceivable power and mastery of the Buddha, understood and comprehended, whereas the great disciples, the best of the best, did not see or understand, because they did not have the eye of enlightening beings. On the snowy king of mountains are many medicinal herbs, which someone who is expert in secret lore and medicine, knowing all the principles of herbal medicine, may go and pick, while herders and hunters on the same mountain, ignorant of herbal medicine, do not know the essence, energy, results, efficacy, or method of application of the herbs. In the same way, those enlightening beings who had entered the sphere of knowledge of Buddhas and produced the transformed perceptions of enlightening beings were aware of the transfigured perceptions of the concentration of Buddha, while the great disciples, even though they were there in the same Jita grove, being satisfied with their own task and having no desire to work for others, being indifferent, dwelt in the feeling of bliss because they were in a condition of bliss in their present state and so were not aware of the perceptions of the concentration and miraculous transfiguration of Buddha. This earth is abundantly endowed with mines of jewels of all kinds, with hundreds of thousands of deposits, filled with endless supplies of various jewels. Someone who has acquired knowledge of precious substances, sees where the deposits are, has thoroughly studied the appropriate science and technology, and is supported by immense virtue and strength, then can take jewels and enjoy himself as he wishes, properly honor his parents, support his wife and children, and also distribute them evenly to the old, the poor, the destitute, the unfortunate, those without food and clothing. On the other hand, those who do not know about the deposits of jewels, who have not done good works, and have not clarified the eye of knowledge of the precious, do not discover the jewel mines in spite of the fact that they are walking on them, they do not take the jewels and do not do what can be done with jewels. Similarly, the enlightening beings in the Jita grove who had clarified the eye of knowledge of the inconceivable sphere of Buddha and who had entered the sphere of the inconceivable knowledge of Buddha saw the miraculous transfigurations of Buddha, entered the oceans of principles of the Buddha teachings, attained oceans of concentrations, engaged in the service of the Buddhas, took to embracing all truths, took all beings into their care with the four means of integration. The great disciples, however, did not see or notice the transfigurations of the Buddha or the great assembly of the enlightening beings. It was, again, 
as if a man came to a land of jewels with his eyes blindfolded by a rag, he might walk around, stand, sit, and lie there, but he would not see the masses of jewels, he would not see the jewel trees, jewel clothes, jewel fragrances, or any of the other jewels. Furthermore, he would not know the use, value, or enjoyment of those jewels. He would not take the jewels and would not know what to do with the jewels. Someone whose eyes were uncovered, however, would see and distinguish them all. In the same way, those enlightening beings, having come to the land of jewels of truth, where the unsurpassed jewel of the enlightened adornment of all worlds, was right before them, standing in the Jita grove, saw the Buddha displaying inconceivable miraculous transfigurations. The great disciples, however, were standing at the Buddha's feet and gazing at the Buddha, but they did not see the miraculous occurrence emanating from the sphere of the Buddha's concentration, and did not see the great treasury of jewels which was the great assembly of enlightening beings. Why? They were inimical to omniscience, their eyes covered with the rag of ignorance, and they had not clarified the eye of unobstructed knowledge of enlightening beings, and they did not realize that all things interpenetrate, which is how they could have seen. The miracle produced by the inconceivable power of the Buddha's concentration. Again, it is as if there is an eye purifier called possessed of undefiled brilliance, which is incompatible with any darkness or obscurity, suppose someone obtained it and with that I clarify or possessed of undefiled brilliance went in the dark of night among a huge crowd of people in various postures unable to see in the darkness, and walked around, stood there, sat down, and so on, those people would not see this person or distinguish what he was doing. On the other hand, this person would see the crowd of people, their various postures, positions, locations, appearances, and dress. In the same way, the Buddha, together with his company of enlightening beings, having the pure unobstructed eye of knowledge, discerns and sees all beings. Buddha shows the miracle emanated from the great concentration of Buddha, but the great disciples did not see the miracle emanated from the concentration of great knowledge of Buddha, or the great company of the assembly of enlightening beings. Also, it is as if a monk in the midst of a large group of people attained the concentration of total absorption in earth or water or fire or wind, or total absorption in blue, yellow, red, or white, or total absorption in heaven, or in the bodies of various beings, or in all sounds, or in all objects, that group of people would not see the body of water, would not see the realm of fire, would not see the various bodies or totality of objects in which the monk's mind was absorbed, except for those who had themselves attained those states of concentration. In the same way, the great disciples did not see the Buddha's revelation of the inconceivable wonder of the sphere of the concentration of Buddha, while the enlightening beings who had attained the path of the Buddha entered into the sphere of the Buddha. Again, it is as if there were an ointment, which simply by being applied to one's eyes makes one invisible to others while one is able to see others. In the same way Buddha, beyond the world, beyond the spheres of all beings, having entered the sphere of omniscience, can be discerned by the eye of knowledge of enlightening beings, and sees all beings in the world, but the great disciples could not see those miracles of the Buddha. It is also like the case of the celestial spirit born together with a person and always associated with the person, the spirit sees the person, but the person does not see the spirit. In the same way, the Buddha, in the sphere of omniscience, manifested great miraculous transfigurations of Buddha in the midst of the great assembly of enlightening beings, but the great disciples did not see, did not notice, the miracle of the transfiguration of the Buddha or the magical manifestation of the circle of enlightening beings. Again, it is like the case of a monk who has attained perfect control of mind and has reached extinction of perception and sensation, he neither perceives nor cognizes and does nothing with his six sense organs, but still is not totally extinct. All the ordinary events of the world are going on there where he is, but he does not perceive or cognize them, because of the overmastery of the power of his concentration. In the same way, the great disciples were in the Jita grove and had the six sense faculties, but they did not see, penetrate, perceive, or discern the miracle of the power emanated from the concentration of the Buddha. 
nor did they gain access to, see, or cognize the great gathering of the enlightening beings, the miracle of the enlightening beings, the transfiguration of the enlightening beings. Why? The sphere of Buddha is indeed profound, vast, immeasurable, difficult to see, difficult to realize, difficult to plunge into, completely beyond all worldlings, for all disciples and individual illuminates, the sphere of Buddha is unthinkable and ungraspable. Therefore, the great disciples, even though they were there in the Jita grove at the feet of the Buddha, did not see the transfigurations of the Buddha, and they did not see or apprehend the great gathering of enlightening beings or their concentration of the arrays of qualities of enlightening beings or their concentration of the arrays of qualities of inconceivable, innumerable purified worlds in the Jita grove, because they did not have the capacity to do so. At that time the enlightening being light from the origin of the vows of the illumination, by the power of Buddha, looked over the ten directions and then spoke these verses. See how inconceivable is the enlightenment of Buddha, the best of beings. In the Jita grove he shows the victor's transfiguration of the enlightened. He exercises incalculable independent power. Whereat the world is confused, not knowing Buddha's qualities. Profound is the miracle worked by the spiritual sovereign, infinite, inconceivable, beyond the range of the world. The Buddhas are adorned with infinite attributes but the truths revealed by the Buddhas are signless. The victor shows transfigurations in the Jita grove. Boundlessly deep, most hard to put into words. The enlightening beings do not look at the assembly of saints. Having come from innumerable lands to see the Buddha, they have attained the sphere of unobstructed, unattached action. By their determination, no one in the world can know their will. All those enlightened on their own and the disciples all around do not know their doings or their state of mind. The enlightening beings, great in wisdom, are invulnerable, invincible. Paragons of heroism, undefiled, certain of the stage of knowledge. Beyond measure, of great fame, they have attained concentration and display a miracle extending throughout the cosmos. Then the enlightening being king of Invincible energy, by the power of Buddha, looked over the ten directions and spoke these verses. Full of virtue and great knowledge, gone to the goal of enlightening practice. Givers of security to all worlds, behold these, the offspring of Buddha. Intelligent, with boundless wisdom and well-concentrated minds, in the realm of boundlessly deep and broad knowledge. The great grove called Jita where the perfect Buddha sojourns, is adorned with magnificent arrays and filled with enlightening beings. See the great oceans, non-reliant, independent sitting on lotus thrones, having come from the ten directions, not resting on anything, not grasping, free from falsehood, without abode, with unattached minds, dispassionate, set on the reality realm. Exemplars of knowledge, great heroes, with unshakable adamant minds, in the midst of unperishing truths, they make a show of nirvana. They have come together from countless worlds in the ten directions. Come to the Buddha, without any notions of duality. They see the miraculous transfiguration of the autonomous Buddha. By the power of which these enlightening beings have come. They are non-discriminatory in regard to Buddha teachings and the plane of realities. The offspring of Buddha have thoroughly realized that distinctions are merely mundane conventions. The Buddha stand in the undifferentiated ultimate limit of the reality realm. Yet show the differentiation of things by inexhaustible sayings. Then the enlightening being king of fiery. Energy of universal splendor, by the power of. Buddha, looked over the ten directions and spoke. These verses. See the immense sphere of knowledge of the best of beings. Knowing when is the right time and when not, he teaches the truth to people. Destroying the various arguments marshaled by heretics. He shows beings spiritual transfigurations according to their dispositions. Buddha is not finite or infinite. The great sage has transcended finitude and infinity. Like the sun coursing through the sky giving light every day. So does the sagacious guide appear independent of past, present, and future. 
as the sphere of the full moon shines at night. So does one see the guide, full of pure qualities. As the globe of the sun courses through space. Without stopping. Such is the transfiguration of the Buddha. Just as space is independent of all land. So is the Buddha transfiguration of the lamp of. The world to be known. As the earth is the support of all corporeal beings in the world. In the same way is the will of teaching of the lamp of the world steadfast. As the wind blows swiftly through the sky, not sticking to anything. In the same way does the nature of Buddha operate in the world. Just as all lands are founded on a mass of water. So are the Buddhas of all times founded on a mass of knowledge. Then the enlightening being king of. Unobstructed splendor, by the power of Buddha. Looked over the ten directions and spoke these. Verses. Like a lofty mountain made of diamond does Buddha emerge in the world, savior of all beings. Like the water of the ocean, immeasurable, pure. Does the sight of Buddha stop the thirst of the world? Just as the polar mountain emerges from the ocean water, so does the light of the world emerge from the ocean of truth. Like an ocean filled with deposits of jewels is the independent one's instant awareness of endless knowledge. Profound is the guide's knowledge, incalculable, infinite by which he shows infinite inconceivable Buddha transfigurations. As an expert magician shows illusory forms Buddha, master of knowledge, displays transfigurations. As a pure wish fulfilling jewel grants what is desired. The victor fulfills the aspirations of those whose intentions are pure. Like a luminous jewel shining omniscience, pure, illumines beings' minds. Like an octagonal jewel facing all directions. The unobstructed lamp illumines the cosmos. Like a water clarifying light purifying water. Vision of Buddha purifies people's senses. Then the enlightening being supreme moon of. Vows emanated throughout the cosmos, by the. Power to Buddha, looked over the ten directions. And spoke these verses. As everywhere is made one hue by an emerald, vision of Buddha makes beings the hue of enlightenment. In each atom Buddha shows transformation of various kinds. Beyond measure, purifying the enlightening beings. That is extremely profound, unlimited, hard to approach, in the realm of knowledge of the wise, inaccessible to worldlings. The full arrays of adornments purified by the works of Buddha are perceived by enlightening beings entering the reality realm. The inconceivable Buddha lands where the victor appears are filled with Buddha surrounded by the wise, everywhere. The teacher, master of all truths, the hero of the Shakyas, has come forth, it is his immeasurable miracle that has appeared. You see the variety of the infinite deeds of the resolute, the one of infinite splendor shows endless transformations. The leader of the world teaches the offspring of Buddha about the reality realm, and they develop the range of knowledge unattached in all things. Buddha's will of teaching turns by spiritual power. Filled with hundreds of miracles, purifying all worlds. In the realm of the best of beings, their spheroi knowledge purified. The great dragons, rich in wisdom, liberate all beings. Then the enlightening being king of fiery. Energy oi truth, by the power oi Buddha, looked over the ten directions and spoke these verses. The disciples trained in past, present, and future, foremost sages, do not even know a footstep of a perfect Buddha. Even all individual illuminates do not know a footstep of the protector. How much less could ordinary beings know the God? As they are bound in chains and wrapped in the dark of ignorance. Unquantifiable, the victor cannot be known by any scales. Endowed with unobstructed knowledge, Buddha transcends the path of words. Radiant as the full moon, steady, adorned with a multitude of qualities. He passes infinite eons creating transformations. Thinking of the Buddha in every way with perfect concentration. Even after untold billions of eons Buddha would still be inconceivable. One cannot understand the limit of even a single attribute of the independent. Even while gazing on Buddha, for the qualities of Buddha are inconceivable. Those who are intent on this, and whose minds delight therein, will attain these realms, 
which are so hard to see. Valiant ones of great resources, intelligent, pure-minded, stable. Enter into this teaching, made of endless virtue and knowledge. Great is their aspiration, great their discipline of mind. They will attain great enlightenment, having arrived at the sphere of the victor. Then the enlightening being standard of knowledge scattering all bands of demons, but the power of Buddha looked over the ten directions and spoke these verses. Being the body of unobstructed knowledge, the independent is incorporeal. In the realm of inconceivable knowledge, that cannot be conceived. The Buddha body is realized by inconceivable pure deeds. Undefiled by the triple world, it shines with distinctive embellishments. Universal light of the world, having clarified the reality realm. It is also the door of enlightenment, the mine of all knowledge. Dispassionate, free from falsehood, having shed all hindrances. As the sun of the world Buddha radiates lights of knowledge. That which removes the fears of existence and purifies those in the triple world, the development of enlightening beings is thus the mine of Buddha's enlightenment. Buddha shows infinite forms without sticking to any form, and shows those inconceivable forms through all living creatures. No one can reach the end of the knowledge of Buddha. By which inconceivable enlightenment is instantly clarified. Inexhaustible exposition of knowledge, wherein are the Buddhas of all times. Is produced in a single instant, without any change in essence. The wise seeker of enlightenment, engaged in endless action, should always think. Although it be thought, no thought is born in this thought. The inconceivable elements of Buddhahood realized by the perfectly enlightened are profound beyond all telling, beyond the scope of words. Then the enlightening being flames of knowledge of vows of the illuminator, by the power of Buddha, looked over the ten directions and spoke these verses. Those of unerring recollection, pure, born of truth, of certain mind, and inconceivable wisdom, are inexhaustible oceans of enlightenment. This is the sphere of action of those whose minds are resolved hereon. Their knowledge is unshakable, they have ended doubt. They do not become depressed or dejected, their minds are on the way to Buddhahood. Filled with good qualities realized over countless eons. The peerless seekers of knowledge dedicate them all. They think about the course of life but do not take refuge in it. They take refuge in the Buddha teachings, sporting in the realm of Buddha. Whatever mundane fortune takes place in the world of sentient beings. The resolute relinquish it all, for they are set on the attainment of Buddhahood. Vainly clinging, the world is always fettered, there, those of unobstructed action are always set on the welfare of beings. Unequaled in their action, inconceivable to all beings. They consider the happiness of the world, whereby suffering is repelled. They have purified knowledge of enlightenment and are sympathetic to all beings. As lights of the world, emancipating all beings. Then the enlightening being valiant one with knowledge to disperse all barriers, by the power of Buddha, looked over the ten directions and spoke these verses. The name of Buddha is hard to come by even in a billion eons. How much more so the sight of Buddha, supreme, which ends all desires. Buddha appears as the light of the world, gone to the goal of all truth, worthy of the offerings of the three worlds, purifier of all beings. Those who regard the physical form of the impeccable best of beings. Never tire of it even in countless eons. Offspring of the victor looking at the form body of the Lord of humans. Unattached, dedicate themselves purely to enlightenment, seeking the highest goal. This is the door to enlightenment, the corporeal embodiment of the great sage. Whence issue unhindered, inexhaustible analytic intellectual powers. Having illumined infinite beings, the great sage foretells their supreme enlightenment, having led them into the great vehicle. The great field of blessings, a sphere of knowledge, has emerged and illuminates infinite beings, increasing the mass of virtue. There is no fear of evil ways for those who associate now with Buddha. 
the one who cuts through the net of misery and purifies the mass of knowledge. A great mind is born in those who see the Buddha. Immeasurable wisdom and power is born, radiant as the moon. They will be sure of enlightenment, having seen the Buddha. And will be certain that they will become Buddhas themselves. Then the enlightening being king of super. Knowledge discerning the differentiations of the plane of the cosmos, by the power of Buddha. Looked over the ten directions and spoke these verses. Having seen the sage endowed with infinite virtues. The minds of those dedicated to the great vehicle are purified. The Buddhas appear for the welfare of all beings. Universally compassionate, steadfast, turning the will of the teaching. How can all creatures requite the Buddha's countless eons of dedication to their welfare? It is better to burn in the fearsome three evils for eons. Than not to see the teacher, who quells all attachments. All the mass of suffering that takes place in all realms of being is tolerable, but not deprivation of the sight of Buddha. It is better to live long in every miserable way in the world, than not to hear the Buddhas. Each con spent even in hell is better, than elsewhere apart from Buddha, distant from enlightenment. What is the reason for wanting to live long amid calamities? It is to see the Buddha and increase in knowledge. All miseries are ended once the Buddha has been seen. An entry into knowledge takes place, into the sphere of the enlightened. All obstructions are removed when Buddha is seen. Increasing measureless virtue, whereby enlightenment is attained. Sight of Buddha severs all doubts of sentient beings. And fulfills all purposes, mundane and transcendental. Then the great enlightening being universally good, having looked over the host of enlightening beings everywhere, to further analyze, discuss in detail, explain, reveal, elucidate, bring to light, illumine, and point out, by means of the cosmos of truths, equal to the realm of space, equal to past, present, and future, equal to the realm of realities, equal to the realm of beings, equal to the realm of all worlds, equal to all sets of actions, equal to the dispositions of beings, equal to the interests of beings, equal to the specific illustrations of truth, equal to the appropriate times for the maturation of beings, and equal to the faculties of all beings, elucidated this lion emergence concentration of Buddha by means of ten indications, indication of the succession of all Buddhas and the succession of lands in the atoms of the Buddha lands throughout all universes, indication of the seeking and following of virtues of the Buddhas in all Buddha lands in space throughout the future, indication of Buddhas emerging in all Buddha lands and showing the ocean of infinitely various doors of enlightenment, indication of the hosts of enlightening beings in the circles of the Buddhas in the Buddha lands throughout space facing the terrace of enlightenment, indication of pervading the cosmos in a moment of thought with emanations in the forms of the Buddhas of past, present, and future, emitted from every pore, indication of the light of magical pervasion of all multitudes of lands in all the oceans in all directions equally with one body, indication of revelation of the power of concentration of all pasts, presents, and futures of the transfigurations of the state of Buddhahood in the surfaces of all objects, indication of manifestation of the oceans of eons of various successive transfigurations of Buddha in the lands of past, present, and future, equal to the atoms in all lands, Indication of the birth of enlightening beings from the endless power emanating from every pore by the ocean of vows of all Buddhas of past, present, and future, indication of endless manifestation of varied expositions of truth amid equal adornments of sites of enlightenment with circles of enlightening beings around lion thrones equal in extent to the cosmos. These ten, O offspring of the victor, said Samantabhadra, the universally good enlightening being, are the first ten of as many expressions of the lion emergence concentration as atoms in untold Buddha lands, which I follow. However, these are the sphere of knowledge of those who arrive at thusness. Then the enlightening being universally good, illuminating the expression of the meaning of the lion emergence concentration of Buddha, by the empowerment of Buddha, while gazing on the face of Buddha, observing the ocean of assemblies everywhere, 
observing the infinitely various transfigurations of the concentration of Buddha in the inconceivable sphere of the enlightened, observing the magical nature of inconceivable knowledge, and observing all teachings expressed in an inconceivably infinite variety of manners of speaking, then uttered these verses. Like the atoms of all lands are the oceanic Buddha lands on a single hair tip. Surrounded by a circle of enlightening beings, their Buddha rests on the throne of the enlightened. In the ocean of Buddha lands on a single hair, on a lotus throne at the site of enlightenment. Extended throughout the cosmos, the guide is seen at the trees of enlightenment. Like the atoms in all lands are the Buddhas assembled on a single hair. Surrounded by a host of enlightening beings, they expound all good actions. Buddha sits in one land pervading all lands. Endless hosts of enlightening beings go there from everywhere. Like atoms in countless lands, enlightening beings, radiant seas of virtue, should appear in the audiences of the teachers, throughout the cosmos. Appearing like reflections in all lands, oceans of knowledge of Buddhas, established in good practices, they arrive in the assemblies of all Buddhas. Assembled everywhere in all lands, in the realm of the joy of enlightening practice, delighted in hearing the myriad teachings, they pass millions of eons in each land. Enlightening beings carry out their practices coursing in the ocean of truth, emanating light, they enter the oceans of vows, established in the sphere of Buddhahood. Born of the teachings of the Buddhas, acting with universal good in mind, they enter the oceans of qualities of Buddhas, in vast transfigurations. Pervading the refuge of the reality realm, they constantly emanate a cloud of bodies. Many as atoms in all lands, with the reign of truth, for enlightenment. Continued, see.